and they recorded that great uh, CD in, it was an album at the time, in Detroit, Michigan, up in Michigan, Dave Plagamar is up in your territory, Michigan, and that song has blessed people over the years. It continues to be a blessing to me, that healing song, the healing song. Um, we don't have the rights to the song, so we pray it, play it before we start our recording so we don't get in trouble with Facebook or YouTube or anybody. But if you can, Google uh, Google Richard Smallwood and Vision and download that song for yourself, to yourself. You'll find if you play that several times throughout the week, it will encourage you and lift you up. We give a shout-out to everybody and thank God for you. I uh, want to give a shout-out. Uh, well, we're going to go into prayer. We said we would pray for the sick and the shut-in and the afflicted. Many are afflicted, ladies and gentlemen. You know many who are afflicted. And so um, if you um, know anyone who needs prayer, just type their name in the chat window. I have a list here. We may not get to pray for everybody on the prayer list, but we're certainly going to pray. We're going to start with um, the bereaved families, the bereaved families, families in grief. Uh, we lift up Dr. Jean Bratton, our colleague here at uh, the online church. Dr. Jean uh, will be funeralizing her sister Julie soon, and uh, we send our Condolences to Dr. Jean, and we're praying much for her family. We're praying for the Ballou family in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Ballou family long ago gave me as a gift the pulpit Bible that I used in the pulpit for many years, and now it's the Bible that Jackie and I use in our prayer room. We pray for the family and the loss of their son uh, and, and our brother Carl Ballou. We pray for the Alvin family. Jay, we give a shout out to you and your family. Jay Alvin, uh, whose uh, brother Kenneth passed away in our old neighborhood, William Circle in Chester, Pennsylvania. And there are many others who are bereaved, and uh, we can't call everybody's name. So forgive us if we didn't get to your name, uh, the name of the people on your list. We uh, pray the prayer of healing, God, in the name of Jesus for uh, Dave Flagam, Plagamars, Dave said he's been uh, ill and achy and this and that, and a lot of a lot of us have been going through these aches and pains and all, that sort of thing. It's the allergy season here in uh, Georgia, and uh, I noticed a couple of tick bites on my body this week, so the, that that explains the aching in the joints, of uh, the tick bites. But we claim healing in the name of Jesus. There is no situation that God cannot heal. There is a bomb in Gilead. Praise God. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up all of the bereaved all over this nation, all over this world, in the nations where they are listening to this recording. Many people have died because of this coronavirus and other complications. We lift up those who are in grief and in bereavement. We know, according to your word, there is a bomb in Gilead. You are the healer. And, Father, we thank you that we get our comfort from you. And, Father, we lift up the sick and the afflicted, uh, Dave and many others who have been afflicted and firm. And, Father, we claim healing for them. You are the healer, and we call upon you, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, meaning the Lord, our healer, to stretch forth your mighty hand, not only across this nation, but across the nations of the world, and heal and manifest your presence and magnify your glory, Lord, throughout the whole earth. And we receive healing, and we bless you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we receive healing for those in grief and bereavement. We receive healing for those whose bodies have been attacked. And, Lord God, we thank you. We bless you, and we praise you. And, Father, I know we missed a lot of names, but we just ask that you bless all who are suffering these days. Help them to look to you, God. You are our strength. You are the healer. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And so we bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to ask you today to 
turn in your Bibles. By the way, just want to mention, uh, give a shout out to uh, Jackie Carter. Jackie Carter is with me here in the in the studio. Her office is right next to mine, and uh, we are celebrating our ninth wedding anniversary on Saturday. Dr. Jean Bratton, you were there to be a witness. You drove all the way from Pennsylvania to be with us in Georgia. Yes, Lisa I did. Johnson, you and Larry were there. Praise God. Jackie, do you remember, I mean, um, Jean, do you remember that day? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful day. Oh, we had some dishes we never had before, and they were so good. Southern yes. hospitality, Southern yes. hospitality, mm -hmm. and we want to thank you for driving all the way from Pennsylvania to be a witness of our yes. wedding, and um, thank God, and praise God, and thank Larry and Lisa Johnson for driving down also from Coatesville, Pennsylvania, to be a witness of our wedding down here in Georgia, and we're going to ask Jackie Carter to come on and greet us this morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the well wishes, and I'm happy to know we will be celebrating on Saturday. The date is actually on Thursday, however, uh, and it will be nine years, and um, he's already started the celebration, so um, that's awesome. Usually, I'm the one that starts a week early, but it's it's kind of kind of warm and fuzzy to know that he is um, doing a new thing. Praise God. Um, but it's so good to see those of you who are on and to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we look forward to today's message, which I know, as always, will be something that lifts our spirits, stirs our souls, and helps us to be better than we were before. Amen. 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 Oh, Thank you, Lord. Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. I stand corrected. Hey, Ryan Trogler. Ryan, we guys, we never get those dates right, do we? We never get those dates right. Huh, Ryan? Good morning, Pastor. How is everybody doing? I'm going to wish you and Miss Jackie hey. a happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, man. God bless you. How are you and Miss Tara doing? Oh, uh, we're doing really good, really good. And yes, uh, speaking of the dates, uh, to remind us, uh, I'm reminded about three months ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Uh, praise God, praise God. Pray that you all are doing very well and that you're safe. And you, Tara and Jenna, are doing very well. And good to hear your voice again. Okay, praise oh, God. Amen. Now, amen. I pray. I pray for the sick uh, and 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 the bereaved. Now, would you lead us in prayer for this service today? I sure will. Thank you, uh, Heavenly Father. It. Heavenly Father, we come to you today humbly, and Lord, we just want to say thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and ascending into heaven to be at the right hand of the Father, so you may intercede for all mankind. And Lord, we just want to come to you today and ask you for some healing and blessings this, this today and all for every day. And we want you to come down and and, and bless and heal uh, all the, the people that are sick with this virus. And, and no matter what disease they have, please heal them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, please uh, uh, keep providing and blessing the people who can't get out or can't work yet. Uh, please keep providing for them. And Lord, just bless this great nation of America and the leadership and all leaderships around the world. Lord, may we ask you to help, you know, give Pastor Carter the courage and the wisdom and the strength and the knowledge to teach us your word again today. Lord, we just want to say thank you for all that you've done for us, and we just want to pray for, again, pray for all the sick that are that are affected by this stuff. And, <clears throat> and Lord, we just want to say, you know, we just thank you and love you, praise you, honor, honor you, and worship you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Brother Ryan, and we love you and appreciate you very much. Praise God. Everybody, let's uh, open our Bibles to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, or Nehemiah, as they were pronounced properly. Nehemiah, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, download Nehemiah. Now, I know in many churches where I've, I've had the privilege of preaching, people, would, when you mention Nehemiah or Ezra or Nahum or Habakkuk, people would turn to the table of contents 
the table of contents. Well, I'm not there to, to, to see how you're going to get it, but get it, get it, get it. Nehemiah chapter 1. Praise God. And this, um, to set the background for today's message, and today's message is going to be a very powerful, on time, nailing it, on target message, entitled, Let Us Rise Up and Build. Let Us Rise Up and Build build. We're starting with Nehemiah chapter 1, and I'm going to ask a, a good, strong reader, uh, Karen, if you have Karen Herzog up in uh, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Karen, if you have uh, Nehemiah, would you read the entire first chapter for us? And ladies and gentlemen, please pay attention to this first chapter because it's very important to the entire message. I think Karen had put something in the chat room about there's no audio, so I have Karen. You hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you, Karen. Okay, I didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> okay. I was double muted, actually. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, I'm reading actually from the King James Version of the Bible. Yes, mm-hmm. Um, Nehemiah's prayer for Israel. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month Tizlu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Hananiah, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept, and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed for the God of heaven. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear hear, let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest, Thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, thou there were of you cast out unto the uttermost of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now there are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed, by thy great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ears be attentive to the prayer of thy servant, to the prayer of thy servant who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee, thy servant, this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. Praise God. Thank you, Karen, for reading the Word of God, the entire chapter of Nehemiah. And uh, we are blessed as we uh, look at the Scripture. We thank God for the Word of God. And the Scripture, it is so important, ladies and gentlemen, to study the Word of God. I hear many, many people saying, I'm, and especially since the tsunami, the, the coronavirus, saying, I'm going to draw nearer to God. I'm going to get closer to God. But still, yeah. many have not made a commitment to study the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, study this word. Study this word. From Genesis to Revelation, study the Bible. That's how you get closer to God. 
If you want to know what God's mind is all about, what his heart is all about, what's in God's spirit, then study what God's word says. Okay, um, uh, when, 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 when God sent Jesus to the earth, the Bible says, and the word became flesh, and we uh, beheld him. Uh, he dwelt among us. And so if you want to know what God is like, study his word. You want to know what God wants, what his will is, study his word. If you want to know what God's plan is for your life, study his word. If you want to know what's happening in the world today, in the earth, you want to get a word of wisdom, uh, study the word. If you want to get a word of knowledge, study the word of God. And so I challenge you, every one of you who has said, uh, I'm going to get closer to the Lord, I challenge you. I, I, I dare you, I double dog dare you to join the Back to Basic School of Ministry and study the Word of God for us and, and join the school for credit. In fact, I double dare, I double dare, dog dare you, and as a, an incentive, we're offering a free course this next semester. The next semester begins on Wednesday, May 6th, and we're offering it to, this to anybody for free. You'll get free three credits towards a degree and the course won't cost you nothing not n it's free and so this is a challenge and i know a lot of you i've heard a lot of you say i'm going to get closer to god well the first step to getting closer to god is repenting of your sins and uh uh, acknowledge jesus as lord and then if you really truly i mean if you mean what you say then you're going to study the Word of God. You're going to take the time out. You're going to make that commitment. You're going to set aside quality time. And so we offer an opportunity for you through this school that offers a free course this semester. And we're studying the books of the Old Testament history, part two. We're looking at the books of First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Then we're going to look at the Apocrypha and the Pseudepigrapha. You say, what? The Apocrypha and the Pseudepigrapha. Yes, you have to join the course to find out. But we're going to blow out of the water the Masons, the Masonics, the Eastern Star, and all those people who think they know more than uh, the Bible students of God who claim they have the hidden books. They've got the secrets. They've got the secrets that Ezekiel didn't know about. They've got the secrets that Daniel didn't know about. They've got the secrets that Paul didn't know about in their hidden books of the Bible. Well, we're going to take a look at those hidden books of the Bible, and we're going to blow a whole lot of y'all out of the water so you can come to your senses and read the Bible, the Word of God, everything from Genesis to Revelation, and some of you can get saved as a result of that and get away from that idolatry and that witchcraft that, that a lot of you have been gripped by. Yes, I'm challenging you in the name of Jesus to draw closer to God by studying the Word of God. And we praise God. So that's starting next Wednesday. If you want to be a part of this, if you want to put your money where your mouth is, then uh, I'm challenging you. We're offering you a free course in the Back to Basic School of Ministry. I want to see how many of you grab onto this. And those of you in the international community, yes, we can accommodate you. We can set you up with a plan, with a program. We thank God for Victor Sherba, who's in our doctoral program in Mombasa, Kenya. We thank God for uh, Jack Owena, who's in our doctoral program in Mombasa, Kenya. And we thank God for many others who are studying and getting their degrees. We thank God for those in, in bachelor's degree programs and master's degree programs worldwide. So God has made it possible through this little old ministry, Back to Basics Ministry. And you are part of this, and we appreciate you and thank you very, very much. Nehemiah, what a mighty man of God. We're talking today on the subject, let us rise up and build. Now, uh, now before you prejudge this sermon, because I know a lot of you Bible scholars out there say, Nehemiah, now what's that got to do with what we're doing today? What's Nehemiah got to do with this, a coronavirus? What's Nehemiah got to do with all this death and destruction we're seeing today? What's Nehemiah got to do with anything? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is alive. It's the living word of God. God does not give us this history just uh, 
to demonstrate his writing techniques and abilities. No, every word of God is pure and is profitable for you and for me. Nehemiah was one of the captives in Babylon. Uh, perhaps he was born in Babylon. Uh, the captivity was 70 years, 70 years, and Nehemiah, we believe, was one who was born in Babylon. He was not taken out of Israel into Babylon, but born into Babylon, and God had a calling on his life, and so he had a burden, and he tells us when it happened. It was in the, uh, in the uh, month of Chislu, in the 20th year, as he was in Shushan, the palace. And so uh, the book uh, describes the king. Nehemiah comes right after, um, uh, right after Esther made that great plea uh, to God for the sparing of the lives of the Jews. Esther made her plea, and God spared the Jews. And later we see Nehemiah. So the books, although the books of the Bible are in a uh, different order, Nehemiah is coming right after Esther. Nehemiah uh, is serving under the king who was happened to be Esther's son. Esther's son was the king of Babylon uh, at this time. Actually, it was Persia, the king of Persia, when, when the Persians uh, took over uh, Cyrus. Actually, Cyrus was a grand, grandson of, of Esther, not the son, the grandson. So Cyrus of Persia issued the decree that the Jews can leave Babylon and go back to their homeland. So Nehemiah leads the third wave of Jews out of captivity. His assignment was to lead the third wave, the third and final wave of the Jews. You may remember in your study of uh, Jewish history, that Zerubbabel uh, left uh, in the first wave, Zerubbabel and Ezra, and, 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 and uh, Zerubbabel began, he was the governor, he began to build the temple, rebuild the temple, Ezra was there, and, and now in, the, in this third wave, Nehemiah, he has a burden, he hears something, he hears something, and it gives him a, a mental picture of what was happening in Jerusalem, and it, it just stirs his spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, when God stirs your spirit like the eagle stirs her nest, when God puts a burden in your heart, the best thing to do is not run to the bishop and get his permission to do anything about it. Not run to your pastor, because a lot of pastors, uh, if they don't get it first, they're not going to support you. But if God puts a burden in your heart, the best thing you ought to do, Ryan, is say, Lord what do you want me to do? Should I sit on this? Should I, should I let it simmer in me a little bit? Should I bake it for a while? Uh, Lord, uh, should I meditate on this? Should I uh, put your word on it? And so when God gives you a vision, just like Habakkuk, Habakkuk said, wait on the vision. Though it may tarry, it will come. And so when God speaks a word in your heart, speak to God about it. Pray about it. Nurture that vision. Wait on that vision. A lot of God's people have missed their blessings because they have not spent the time to help God to develop the vision, the word that God has put in their heart. And later in Nehemiah, we see this word. We see this word from Nehemiah. Uh, uh, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And it's because because a lot of people hear from God, a lot of people make these bold declarations with their mouth, I'm going to get closer to God. I'm going to study God's word. And, you know, uh, we get a lot of people signing up, but a lot of people cannot hang. They don't have the endurance. If you're going to sign up for the school, you ought to get, sign up for, uh, with God Endurance 101 or Long Lasting 101. Or hang in there, 202. And, and Lord, please help me to hold out, 303. Because if you're really going to get closer to God, then you've got to set aside quality time. You've got to put aside some of the things you're used to doing at a certain time and commit that time to the Lord and not let anything or anyone pull you off course. And when you do this, 
you'll find that God will do with you what he did for Nehemiah. God will do with you what he did for Daniel. God will do with you what he did for Ezekiel. God will do for you what he did for Elijah and Elisha. God will do what he, for you what he did for David and Solomon, for so many others, Habakkuk, who waited on the Lord and did not let anything pull him, pull him off course. So we thank God. We bless God and praise God for what he is doing. So Nehemiah hears from Hanani, who was his blood brother, his sibling. Hanani came back to Babylon after a visit to Jerusalem and gave his brother Nehemiah a report. Things were not going well for the remnant of the Jews in Jerusalem. Even those captives who had gone back and built the temple, they were under great persecution. They had no protective walls. The Samaritans, and the, who were a combination of, 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 of remnants of the northern kingdom and the Assyrians, the Samaritans were attacking, along with other tribes, attacking uh, Judah and attacking Jerusalem. And so they had certain people up there, evil men like Sanballat, Gisham, Tobiah, and On, who were tribal warriors, chieftains, who would make war on the people building the wall and on the Jewish people, raping the women, plundering them, robbing and stealing. And so Hanani brings this report to his brother Nehemiah that things are not looking good for our people who have returned to Jerusalem. Yes, they, they have rebuilt the temple. But there are no protective walls. There's no protection. The enemy comes upon us anytime they want to, and we're in a mess. And so Nehemiah, who happened to be the king's cupbearer, very, very important position, he was the king's cupbearer. In other words, before the king ate any meal or drank any wine or beverage, Nehemiah had to taste it. He had to taste the food and taste the, the wine. If the food were poison, Nehemiah would die first before the king. Yes, kings had uh, cup bearers, people who tasted their food and, 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 uh, 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 and, and, and uh, tasted the wine before the king did because poison, poisoning people was a very powerful method used in those days. And so Nehemiah had a very important position with the king. Well, the king noticed that Nehemiah, his countenance wasn't looking too good. And you know, there was a law that if the cupbearer's countenance did not please the king, the king could kill the cupbearer. So God spared Nehemiah's life. Nehemiah could have been put to death by looking bad. What if, uh, what if the law said, you and I, we could be put to death by looking bad, by looking sad? You know what? They would wipe out half of the church in America. You know, folks come in looking sad. I think some people think they're called to look sad. Gene Bratton, you know what I'm talking about. You're a pastor. I think some people think their calling is to look sad and to tug on people's spirit and have people uh, feel sorry for them. If I look <laughs> bad, uh, they might give me part of the offering. If I look bad, they might bless me. If I look bad, if I look bad enough, uh, they might come to my house and give me some money. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been there. I have pastored many people who believe that their calling was to look bad. I mean, they put on that sad look just before they came into the church. But after church is over, they go out and party and have a good time and put on that happy countenance again. What's wrong with folks? Anyway, meanwhile, back to Nehemiah, the king looked at his countenance and said he looked sad. And Nehemiah had been fasting for many days. When he heard the news about Jerusalem, he fasted. Ladies and gentlemen, when we hear bad news about someone, we ought to have some feeling, some sensitivity. There's a need, a great need for sensitivity in the body of Christ. There's a great need for sensitivity among leadership, not only in this nation and in other nations. There are many nations, they have leaders who are insensitive 
to the people. Ladies and gentlemen, God is a sensitive God. He's known as Jehovah Rapha. He's the Lord who heals us. He's very sensitive to our needs. He's known as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who supplies more than what we need. He's, he's, uh, he's very sensitive to us. And so uh, Nehemiah fasted to get the attention of the king, not just to get attention, but after he got attention, he wanted to be able to be in a position to do something about the situation. Ladies and gentlemen, don't put on your sad face just to get attention, but put on your sad face, uh, uh, beat up on your spirit, whip up on your spirit, fast and pray, uh, tear your heart so that you can be in a position that when the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him, when guys, God's eyes meet you and God sees you fasting and praying and denying your stomach food and denying your body sleep because you want to get God's attention. When God's eyes hit on you, God's going to ask you, what can I do? Or God will reveal to you what his plan is. So a lot of you who say, I want to get closer to God, there's a whole lot to getting closer to God than just mouthing off or, or being scared because of coronavirus, or being scared because your neighbor died, or being scared because somebody's sick in your household. If you really want to get closer to God, then make a decision. I'm going to get closer to God so I can be an instrument for the Lord to help God, whatever his plan is. And since we're out here, Ryan, since we're out here, then you ought to be in a position to accept what ever calling God puts on you. God's not going to call every one of you to be a pastor. God's not going to call everyone to be a preacher. God's not going to call everyone to be a teacher. He's not going to be call he's not going to call everyone to be a missionary or an evangelist. He might call somebody to just go down every Saturday and clean the church, keep the building clean, sterilize it. Uh 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 sterilize the pews and all this. Get the church ready for when the church people come back. Or God might call you, uh, get in your car and make some sandwiches and take them down to the bridge and, 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 and bottles of water and sandwiches to the homeless. Or God might call you, take some blankets to the poor who are sleeping under the bridge. God's calling. Let him choose what he wants you to do. You see, when we get born again, truly born again, truly saved, then that means we do not belong to ourselves anymore. We cannot pick and choose uh, uh, the callings of God like we're at a smorgasbord. We cannot uh, pick and choose uh, what we want to do for God. We cannot, pick, but God chooses us. God said, I, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. God said in Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. So when you make up your mind, you're going to seek God's face, then you're also putting yourself in a position, God, whatever you want me to do. And I want to say to you, some of you pastors out there, and some, some of you pastor wannabes, and some of you uh, 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 church leaders, uh, everybody can't take over and lead. Uh, you can't have 20,000 leaders in the church and no followers. Somebody has to lead and somebody has to follow. So learn how to be a good follower. If God has not chosen you to be the leader, be the best follower that you can be. Praise God. Praise God. So Nehemiah got the favor of the king, and the king said, I will send you to Jerusalem. You're going to be the new governor of Jerusalem. I'm going to give you a 12-year assignment to go to uh, Jerusalem and get things right, get things in order, build the walls. If it's walls that you want around Jerusalem, build the walls. Now, we got, we got a character in this country, build a wall around them. You know, the same character who 
cried out, build a wall, now wishes he had let those people in. And now he's, he's got, he, and now he's built a wall around himself, and he's got so much he can't handle, he doesn't know what to do with it, and, 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 and can't tell the truth about anything. Ladies and gentlemen, the situation was different in Jerusalem. They needed a wall of protection against the enemy. I was thinking yesterday about Emma Lazarus. You say, well, who's Emma Lazarus? Well, don't you know Emma Lazarus? Emma Lazarus was the, the Greek lady who wrote the poem that is inscribed at the base of the foot, at the base of the Statue of Liberty. And Emma Lazarus, uh, in, in 1880, she penned these words. She said, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shores, send these the hunger, hung, uh, hungry, hungry tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Ladies and gentlemen, America, because people all over the world heard those words by Emma Lazarus, who had a heart for hurting people and knew that uh, God had raised up America to be a witness to God's power and glory to bless people all over the world. When people heard those words from Emma Lazarus, men and women who had no hope in Arabia, men and women who had no hope in Africa, men and women in South America, men and women in Asia, in Europe who had little hope, and many of our ancestors were among them. Uh, my ancestors did not come voluntarily, but they got here. Others came voluntarily because they heard about uh, the, the opportunities in America. And so Emma Lazarus wrote that. But now we got somebody uh, who, who wants to build a wall. Build a wall. Keep them out. Keep them out. If they're not of a certain uh, 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 ethnicity, keep them out. And so, ladies and gentlemen, what goes around comes around. When you shut people out, when you mistreat people, when you diss people, when you do wrong, it's going to come back. Well, how do you know that, Pastor Carter? I know that because look at Nehemiah chapter 2. We're going to take a look at Nehemiah chapter 2. I'm going to lay some things on you that are going to... Uh, will help you to understand what's going on in the world today. And my message today is, let us rise up and build. Nehemiah had letters from the king of Persia that he could take to any nation surrounding uh, Israel, and he could, get, he could get lumber, he could get materials, whatever he needed. He had letters from the king of Persia. Well, how come he had letters from the king of Persia? Because Persia controlled the world, and kings had to do what the king of Persia said. And so he gave Nehemiah authority to go and get whatever materials he needed to build the wall of Jerusalem and to build a protective wall so that the people could have a protection when they come, came to Jerusalem for worship and for the festivities, and for uh, 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 interaction in the city, and protection against the, 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 the terrorists, against the, the tribes, the, the haters. And so Nehemiah went to Jerusalem. But look at what he did. And this is so important. And I w want you to get this. Verse 11 of chapter 2, starting with verse 11. He says, so I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Nehemiah went to Jerusalem. He stayed there three days. Didn't tell anybody anything. And ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you can't even tell your plans to your spouse. You can't even tell your plans to your children. You, when God gives you a vision, you can't even tell your plans to your deacon board. You can't even tell your plans to your steward board. You can't even tell your plans to the bishop. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Verse 12, and I arose in the night, I and some few men with me. Neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. So Nehemiah stayed in Jerusalem three days. 
Then he arose at night, took a few men with him, and he went on an assessment tour. He took an assessment trip. He took an assessment journey. He took a survey team with him. Verse 13, and I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. How many leaders do, how many leaders do you know who would go and visit the dung port? Verse 14, then I went on to the gate of the fountain, and to the king's pool, and there was no place for the beast that was under my feet to pass, under me to pass. So he went and he looked and he was uh, traveling over all the rubble and the destruction of Jerusalem. I mean, Jerusalem still was lying in waste from when Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed the city 70 years ago. If you want to get a good look at what that destruction looked like, read Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3, where Jeremiah the prophet is an eyewitness of Nebuchadnezzar and his army coming through Jerusalem and destroying. Verse 16, and the rulers knew not whither I went. Well, what I did, he didn't tell the rulers where he was going and what he was doing. You see, he didn't want CNN around. He didn't want TBN around. He didn't, did not want Fox News. He did not want uh, ABC. He did not want Channel 10, Channel 3 around because uh, they would give up his plans. You know, sometimes uh, there are things you've got to do things without trying to get some publicity on it. Nehemiah was not trying to get publicity about it, and he really didn't want he didn't bother about what the what the the mass media's uh, twist was, spin uh, was on on his trip. He said, uh, verse sixteen, and the rulers knew not what I went, whether I went or what I did. Neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priest, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Nehemiah said, I didn't tell anybody anything about my reason for being in Jerusalem. And ladies and gentlemen, when God calls you and gives you a vision, there are going to be people who say, what's the matter with you? Why are you looking this way? Or, 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 or you're changed. Or, or you don't spend time with me like you used to. Or, or what's happening with you? Ladies and gentlemen, when you're truly sold out to God, there are people even in your whole own household who are going to have to uh, uh, accept being short in some areas. Because when you sell out to Jesus, it's all about Jesus and doing what the Lord, God wants balance in our families, in our marriages, and in our homes. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, don't beat up on the man or woman of God because they have made a commitment to the Lord. Learn how to make the adjustment and learn how to let that, loose that person. Let that person go to be all that God wants them to be. That's an important message for a lot of you out there. Verse 17. This is what I believe the Holy Spirit really wants us to grab onto in addition to everything else. Then said I unto them. This is the first time he spoke to the leaders. And the persons he had surrounded, surrounded him, surrounding him. Then said I unto them, you see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. When it was time for him to open his mouth, God gave him the utterance, and he said, you see the distress that we're in. You see this situation. Jerusalem has been like this for 70 years, rubble, destruction. You see the distress that we're in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we may be no more a reproach. Verse 18, then I told them of the hand of my God, 
which was good upon me. And also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. When I told them, verse 18, of the hand of the Lord upon me, which was good upon me. And when I told them what the king's words that he had spoken unto me, and the king had assigned him to go and build those walls and to use whatever means necessary, then they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Ladies and gentlemen, after they had rebuilt the temple, well, it uh, took them uh, about 14 years to rebuild the temple. Seven, they started off in a blaze, and then they rested and stopped working. And then God had to use Haggai and a few other prophets to re reprimand the Jews to complete building the temple. So uh, they, they, they were like a lot of us, we know, on fire. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to uh, get closer to God. I'm joining the school of ministry. I'm going to start studying and start studying for two weeks. And then they drop out. You don't hear from them anymore. And, uh, but yet they've, they've made that quality decision. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you're not going to make it, if you're not going to do it, don't make the decision. Okay. When Nehemiah put on the people what his mission was, and when he reminded them, the hand of the Lord is upon me. And this is what the king said also. Then the people realized it was of God. And they were quickened and charged up. And the anointing came upon them. And they said, let us rise up and build. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes it takes a man of God or a woman of God to come in and stir things. Somebody has to come to First Baptist and shake things up. Somebody has to go to Second Pentecostal and shake things up. Ladies and gentlemen, in my career, over 40 years of preaching, I've been kicked out of a lot of churches. God sent me, and sometimes I think I was God's hit man just to go and shake things up, uh, uh, preach and shake things up, and, 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 and uh, preach the word. And before I finish preaching uh, from the pulpit, uh, flip the keys to the car to my wife, and she knew it was time to go out and start the car before benediction because they're going to chase me out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody's got to shake things up in America. Somebody, somebody's got to shake things up in the White House. Somebody's got to shake things up in your house. And when Nehemiah said to them, the hand of the Lord is upon me, then they said, let us rise up and build. They were convicted. They were convicted. And it might take a man of God or a woman of God or a child of God to come to your house, to come to your situation. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that, that, that even in the church, even in the online church, we've got some of the, I'm going to say it, Dr. Gene Bratton, bless God, we've got some of the laziest, the mouthiest, laziest people in the whole world. I mean, everybody can make a confession. I, I hereby de declare and decree that I'm going to study the Word of God and I'm going to get enrolled in school and I'm a, I should have done this 10 years ago and now's my time and, 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 uh, and I don't want this coronavirus to get me so I'm going to join school. Well, if it's because of the coronavirus, then there's no use joining the school. Don't join the school because of the coronavirus. Join the school because you need to get closer to God and you need someone to teach you the Word of God. And this school is anointed. We've got some anointed teachers in this school. We've got anointed teachers. We've got uh, Jackie Carter. We've got uh, Gene Bratton, anointed of the Lord. We've got Ryan Trugler. We've got uh, Karen Herzog. We've got Lisa Johnson. We've got so many others. And I know I'm out. We've got CK. We've got many others. Uh, we've got Tina and, and who are anointed of the Lord to teach. And so there's no excuse. But it takes a man or woman of God of courage. It takes a man or woman of God of courage even to come and talk to you about your marriage. It takes a man or woman of God of courage to talk to you, Pastor, because you're so stubborn. 
and, and stuck in your ways and nobody can tell you anything. It takes a man or a woman of God of courage, chairman of the steward board or deacon board, uh, to, to shake you up because you think you're the kahuna. You think the first Baptist can't exist without you. And God's got to shake things up to the place where people are convicted by the Holy Spirit, not by the people he sent. The Bible says it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. When the Spirit of the Lord comes and penetrates a heart, God convicts. God convicts. God will convict you if you're lazy. And if you're lazy, don't get mad at me for calling you out. You just bless God plain lazy. And you need to stop being lazy. You need to do something with your life. There are many of you out there need to do something with your life. You talk about God. You talk about him, but you don't know him. And if you really want to know him, you've got to get into his word to know him. There are a lot of people in the church who know about Jesus, but Lord, the Lord is looking for people who, who know him. And the sad thing, ladies and gentlemen, is, is that uh, we put off and we put off. We keep on being lazy. We procrastinate. We put off. We make excuses. We point the finger. We blame others. We blame, uh, uh, we blame somebody for our shortcomings. And then time passes us by. And before long, uh, time is no longer on our side, as Ron, Ronnie Millsap saying, saying, time is on my side. Well, we realize time ain't on our side. And before long, we're, we're about uh, uh, one foot out of the grave. And we look back and say, I, I, I should have, I could have, but I, I did not. I would have, I should have, I could have, but I did not do it. And we waste most of our life procrastinating and putting off to tomorrow what we can do today. And then, and then, and God says, how long will I strive with this stiff-necked people. God wants to give us vision. He wants to speak to us. He wants to show us what, what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a question. And it's all in, 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 in under the umbrella of this subject. Let us rise up and build. Let us rise up and build. I'm going to ask you a personal question. Are you doing what God puts you on planet Earth to do? Mm, that's a heavy, that is deep. That is penetrating. Are you doing what God has put you on planet Earth to do? No, I'm not asking for any excuses. Why not? I'm not asking for you to point the finger. Don't blame the Democrats. You can't blame the Democrats for this one. Are you doing what God put you on planet Earth to do? And if the answer is, no, I'm not, then you ought to join me and be the first in line to say, let us rise up and build. Let us rise up and build. Let me ask you this. Is your marriage where it ought to be? Let us rise up and build. Is your family where it ought to be? Let us rise up and build. Do you know Jesus the way you ought to know? Let us rise up and build. Am I using the gifts that God has given me? Let us rise up and build. Ladies and gentlemen, when the Jews made up their mind, we're going to rise up and build. Jerusalem should not have been laying waste like this for 70 years. There is no reason why those terrorist tribes ought to be coming in, plaguing our people. And the key to the whole thing was this. Nehemiah prayed in that first chapter. He said, he told them that it was because of the sins of the fathers. Verse 6, let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, 
which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and that have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. And we're seeing this in America today, ladies and gentlemen. We're seeing in the world today millions of people being corrupted by a coronavirus. Millions of people are dying. Nearly one-third of the people dying from this plague are Americans. And American lives are no more important than any other lives. lives. American lives are more, no more important than any other lives. But it hits us because Americans, we are Americans. But in being sensitive to what's happening in the world, we can relate to Nehemiah's prayer. God, why is this coronavirus? Why these tsunamis, these earthquakes, the destruction, the wars, the violence? Why do you allow these things? And the bottom line is because we have turned our backs to the Lord. We don't want him in the church. The preacher can only preach 15 minutes. The church clerk gets a half hour to announce the church dinners and the ticket sales. We don't want him in the government. We don't want him on the job. We don't even want God in our marriage. We don't even want God in our family. And so Nehemiah praised God. It is because of our sins and our father's sins and our grandfather's sins and our 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 ancestor sins because of our sins we are in the situation we're in that's what nehemiah said about jerusalem is because of our sins he did not blame the babylonians he did not point the finger at the democrats he did not point the finger at at the the communists he did not point the finger at the socialists he said it is because of our sins that Jerusalem is in this situation and ladies and gentlemen we can truly say God it is because of our sins starting with me and my father's sins and my grandfather's sins my great grandfather's sins my great great grandfather's sins it is because of our sins because of the sins of the church because of the sins of the God, we have sinned against God, and God has permitted this to take place. And until we take a good look at this situation, we will never get to the place where we can come to repentance and say, let us rise up and build. And so we must confess our sins. Don't point the finger at anybody else. Don't point the finger at Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer. Don't point the finger at, at, at Governor uh, Cuomo. Point the finger at yourself. Lord, it's because of my sins. I have not done what you've called me to do. Now that a coronavirus is gripping us, everybody's panicking, and a lot of folks are trying to find a way out. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not tempt you to be above all, above what you're able to deal with, but he'll make a way of escape. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able. But with, with every temptation, every challenge, every situation, every virus, every flu, every uh, dilemma, every catastrophe, Everything that Satan will throw against us, God will make a way of escape if we will humble ourselves. And it takes us back to Second Chronicles 7.14. We close out on this. God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray 
and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. And God will build up the walls around your marriage. He'll build up the walls around your children and your family. He'll build up the walls around your church. He'll build up a wall, the walls around your nation. He will build a spiritual wall, not a physical wall to keep people out. He will build a spiritual wall, a wall of angels around you. No plague, no disease, no sickness, no catastrophe, no calamity, no war, no pestilence. The Bible even promises no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling if we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. So let's trust God. Let's repent of our sins. Let's repent for the sins of the nation. Let's cry out unto the Lord. Let's stop blaming. Let's stop hating. Let's stop the racism. Stop the finger pointing. Stop the greed. Stop the corruption. And let's humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. And then, because there, the work is really ahead of us, great work to be done after this coronavirus is gone, Great work, the healing work, the rebuilding process where we've got to demonstrate our love for one another, cooperate with one another as we obey God. Let us rise up and build. Father, we thank you for this message today. Thank you for your anointing. Help us to obey you. We humble ourselves before you. Forgive us of our sins. Lord, send healing. Send deliverance. Stir the gifts in your people. Oh, God, we put our trust in you. Only you can deliver us. Let us rise up and build. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, God, that we can rise up and build. Help us to build America. Help us build Canada. Help us to build Mexico. Help us to build Costa Rica. Help us to build Honduras, Belize, Nicaragua, Guatemala. Help us to build uh, Venezuela, uh, Brazil, Chile. Uh, uh, help us to build the Caribbean. Help us to build Europe. Help us to build France, England, Ireland, Scotland, Germany. Help us to build uh, the Mideast. Help us to build Israel. Help us to build uh, the, uh, Saudi Arabia. Help us to build uh, Dubai. Help us to build... Uh, Somalia, help us build Ethiopia, help us build Kenya, help us to build uh, Chad, help us to build China, help us to build in the name of Jesus, and help us to love one another. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, we hope you'll stay on. Let's chat and chew for a few, and uh, we're going to end our recording. You can get these recordings on my YouTube channel, Leroy Carter forward slash YouTube forward slash Leroy Carter, or visit our website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com, or send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or call me, 404-205-1101.